What's going on, everybody? My name is Caleb. This is Art. You are fearfully wonderfully made. And today it's time for you to change the world. All right, so yesterday we talked about Proverbs chapter one. Today we're going to talk about Proverbs chapter two. Now remember, the book of Proverbs is written to give instruction. Uh, the Bible, most historians dedicate the book of Proverbs to a man by the name of Solomon. Solomon is going to be the son of King David. Solomon is going to receive favor and grace from God and basically ask God for uh, wisdom. So God gives him a slew of wisdom. So check this out. Um, Psalm chapter, or Proverbs chapter two says this. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thine ear, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hidden treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For God give the, giveth wisdom out of his mouth, come of knowledge and understanding. He lay up wisdom. For the righteous, he is a buckler for them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. Then shall your understanding, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Right? So the Bible is basically telling us that if you search for wisdom, if you ask God for wisdom, you will find wisdom. So today I want to admonish you to ask God for wisdom. Now, how can you ask God for wisdom? Well, you ask God for wisdom through praying the word of God. One of the things that I do is when I'm reading through the book of Proverbs is I literally pray these verses. Now, generally speaking, I listen to the book of Proverbs in the NLT or the uh, ESV version. And while the verses are playing, I just pray the verses. I know that sounds crazy, but I say, for verse example, uh, Proverbs chapter two, verse eight says, "He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of the sinners, a way of the saints." Excuse me, I'm messing it all up. Says he preserved the way of the saints. So if he keeps the path of judgment and preserves the way of the saints, I will pray, God, today I want you to preserve my path and keep me as a saint of your spirit, right? And it says, um, "When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul." Discretion shall preserve you. Discretion means basically having the right mindset, having the right ideology to think the proper things, to keep yourself from getting yourself tripped up into nonsense, to deliver thee from the evil man and from the man that speaketh forward things. The word forward in this text refers to perversion. So when we have wisdom in our mind, we have discernment and we have discretion. Discretion means I can decide from the good and the evil. If I can decide from the good and the evil, that means I can decide from the good things and the perverse things. The perverse things are anything that takes the word of God or righteousness or truth or justice and twist it out of context. I don't want to have those things in my life. So what am I going to do? I'm going to ask God to lead me to make sure that my understanding is the right way, right? Um, who rejoice to do evil. So the enemy rejoices to do evil and delights in the forwardness, forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths to deliver thee from strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, right? So a lot of times we find ourselves, you can use this word, a strange word, if you are married or whatever, it can be a form of adultery. If you're not married, it could be anything ranging from, you know, pornography all the way to uh, just women that are going to get you caught up or for the ladies for pornography or men that are going to get you caught up, you know, or in this day and age, it could be anything. So the Bible is saying that if you keep your mind on God, if you keep your mind on discretion, it's going to keep you away from the things that are perverse, the things that are adulterous. And so me, I want to keep my mind pure. I want to keep my heart pure. So I want God to lead me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. So I'm going to ask God to keep me. Why? Because the forward lady talks about this in verse 18. For her house inclineth unto death and her paths unto the dead. So if it says like this, if you don't listen to wisdom, you're going to follow after the ways of your lust, after the ways of your pleasure. And it's going to take you away from where you want to go and where it's going to take you to. It's going to take you into death. And I know that I don't want to die physically and I definitely don't want to die spiritually. Right. It says thou. It says, so none that go unto her return again, neither take they the paths of life. So here's what we need to do. We need to stay in the word of God. Why? That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect 
shall remain in it. So if you're upright, if you're doing the right things, you're going to remain in the land and the perfect shall dwell in it. Now, I know that I'm not perfect. I know that you're not perfect. There's only one perfect man has ever lived on the face of the universe, and that is God manifested in the flesh in the body of the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus is the only person who ever lived a life without sin. So how can I live a life without sin if I am not Jesus? Well, I have to be baptized into Christ, right? So so how can I do this? I have to put on Christ. Well, what does Romans 6, 4 tell me? I'm going to go to Romans 6, 4 real quick. Romans 6, 4 tells me that I can put on Christ. Romans 6, 4 says I can put on Christ, right? It says this. It says, for therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. And then it goes on to say this. Um... So if we know this, we put on Christ, right? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him and the body of sin might be destroyed and therefore henceforth we would not serve sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we should live with him also. So how can I put on Christ? I have to put on Christ through baptism, right? So I put myself, I immerse myself in the knowledge and the body of who Jesus Christ is. But or when I do this, that means I have the ability through the spirit of God through the Spirit, the very same Spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead, through the Holy Spirit, to live a life that is upright and is going to keep me from being cut off. It says this, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted up. So I don't want to be rooted up. I don't want to be cut off from the earth. I want to inherit the earth. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. I want to be one of the people that is in the body of Christ that inherits the earth in the last day. So how do I do this? I apply the Proverbs to my life. I apply the instruction and the favor and the wisdom of God to my life. And that is how I can grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I can grow in wisdom. I can keep myself from making bad mistakes. So I want to encourage you today to choose God, to choose the word of God. That's all I have for today. My name is Caleb. This is Art. You are fearfully made. And today it's time for you to change the world. Change the world.